Yeah. The so-called Negro community has shot the white man by resisting all efforts to divide us. I think that you and I should continue to shock him by seeing and working together in unity. Despite religious, political, economic, or educational, or social differences, my people are terrified. We've been terrorized to the point that we're mentally and spiritually paralyzed. We suffered through centuries of dehumanization and degradation. It took the form of slavery and segregation in this land of the free, where oppression's government sanctioned. We're subjected to systemic skin color discrimination. From black codes to Jim Crow to black criminalization. It's been 400 years, it's time for our liberation We're a nation, we're in a nation Victims of colonization Where's our revolution and independence day celebration? Cause what's the 4th of July to the slave on the plantation? And slavery didn't end, they just changed its implementation Just check the 13th Amendment Then you'll see why so many black males end up as guilty defendants The system isn't broken, it's working as it's intended so I'm not here to fix it, I'm here to end it. And then again, if we tell you that Negroes are being hung on the tree or being shot down illegally, unjustly, and those Negroes should do something to protect themselves, you say you're advocating violence. I won't rest till this nightmare we're living in ends and we see justice for our murdered young innocent men. If black lives really matter, black people need the proof. Cause we are the only ones responsible for our improvement How can we leave it to someone else to do what's best for us Especially when there's someone else has historically been oppressing us We can't use a system built to enslave us to free us And we really sick if we think that they white Jesus can heal us Our children need us to defend them, teach them and guide them Show them love and bring out the greatness that is deep inside them Are we gonna build a nation or stay on the plantation? Keep begging for our freedom or fight for our liberation. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, he didn't say get nonviolent. He said, praise the Lord to pass the ammunition. We must be willing to die together or we'll definitely die separately. We desperately need unity if liberation is our destiny. If we don't know our history, then we doomed to repeat it. White supremacy is the enemy, but together we can defeat it. They stole us from the motherland, sold us into slavery, forced us to work for them. They got the nerve to call us lazy. In this caste system, we're outcasts, still treated as second class. But I can feel it in the air, revolutions in the forecast. We came for greatness, but they don't want us to know. So they hid our history to keep us under control. All it takes is to take a stand. The enemy's not invincible, but we must come together as one nation in the business. 20 million black people don't even know their own language. Why? Because he took it away from them. 20 million black people who don't even know the history of their ancestors. Why? Because he took it away from them. And he's trying to tell them how thoroughly and completely they've been robbed. He says to teach and hate.
So family, I ran across this clip here online. I think I found it on Twitter. And man, it is a stark reminder and a reinforcement about the consequences of us dating outside of our race. when We produce children. It is a very stark reminder of in America, no matter what you tell yourself as a black person, black man or black woman, you cannot take race out the equation, no matter how delusional you are, no matter how selfish you are. And when you start procreating with particularly the dominant society, a lot of times you create a nightmare scenario for your children. But with that said, we, we're going to let this sister here speak on this. And I want y'all to pay close attention to what she's saying. I don't know what mixed baby needs to hear this, but it's okay if you drop your white mom. It is. There are so many white mothers who sit there and they have mixed babies and then they literally destroy us. My mom, ever since I was little, has been calling black women disgusting and loud and dirty and arrogant and ghetto and... For some reason, she fails to realize that I am the same woman that she is talking about. She fails to realize that there is no difference between us. The only difference is the slightly lighter complexion. That's it. Y'all sit here as white women and you have black and brown and Asian children. And then you literally talk about us like we can't hear you. You talk about how we're disgusting and how we leech off the government and how we're not even from America and how we don't even need to have protests for things because everyone's created equal in the first place. But then you date white supremacists and bring them into our own fucking houses. You expect us to be comfortable with your husbands that wear Trump hats. To make fun of everybody's fucking race except your kid because you, for some reason, have the capacity to think that they're different. To think that they are you when they have never been a part of you in the fucking first place. I don't get how y'all can pretend that your kids don't hear you. And then be absolutely baffled when they finally do. And they finally don't want to be around you. So for the kids that have grown up in environments in the exact same that I have. I don't care if you're afraid of not having parents. I'm afraid of having a parent that can't even see who I am when I'm looking them right in the face. And the fact that I don't even have a parent that knows who I am is pretty much like having none anyways. I don't know now, y'all heard what this young sister here just said. Did you hear the pain in this child's voice? Did you see the look on her face? And did you hear everything that she was speaking? This is what happens when you go out here and you interracially date and you have children by these anti-black racists and white supremacists. Because, see, they don't look at those children as children. They look at them as novelties, as playthings. And they'll say all kinds of stuff around them because they hope to indoctrinate that child to become just like Doja Cat. I got to call a name so that we keep this in the context. And so when you see a young sister like this, biracial, white mother, black father, apparently the way she's speaking, the black father is nowhere around. So, brothers, for those of you that's going to interracially date, the worst thing in the world that you can do is go and have children with one of these white women and leave your child in their care. If it don't work out, you better get custody of your children because that white side of their family, by and large, they are not going to respect and treat those children like human beings. And see, I got to go here with it. Oftentimes, little black children that are biracial. They are greatly abused psychologically, physically, and sexually by the white members of their family. They are greatly abused, which is why they grow up to have all types of issues and disorders from being treated as less than human beings. 
the worrying thing I'm looking at, look at this young sister here. When you start seeing them putting all these piercings in their nose and everything like that, you already know that's a sign of rebellion and acting out and it's to mass pain a lot of times. And see one of the most unfair things in the world for a child that didn't ask to be brought into the world is to be brought into a situation where one or both of their parents treat them as less than human. The psychological damage that that does, especially to a biracial person that's still trying to come to terms with their identity, knowing that they're not going to be accepted by and large by half of their family, usually the white side. Every day that this biracial girl gets up, she see that her hair is different. She understands even though she has a lighter skin tone, she understands how the white side of her family looks at her and treats her. So now if she did meet her father, okay. And I, I'm, I'm assuming that she probably does know who her father is. Don't know what kind of relationship they have. This is where the pain is coming from because she's like a part of me is black. Yet here is my mother saying all these things around me, not taking into account the way, I feel about it. So this should teach you a lesson for all you bucks of better stand out here. You bucks of Bennington. That lets you know that just because somebody lay down with you and they open their legs to you, that doesn't mean that she's not an anti-black racist. Same thing for you sisters. Just cause Zaddy willing to roll around in the hay with you. That doesn't mean he's not a white supremacist or anti-black racist. I got to quote Neely Fuller Jr. Again, White people do not get sexually confused when they get out of bed with black folks. That's only us. And then you produce children and then they have to deal with the hell that this young sister is dealing with. My heart goes out to any of you that are experiencing this. I, I really hate that because see, sometimes adults make selfish decisions and irresponsible decisions, and then you have to end up paying for it. We see where race relations are in this country right now, and, and they really haven't changed. They've, they've regressed. They haven't progressed. They've regressed when you start to look at things from the whole of our situation as black people. And then you have a biracial person that has to try to navigate that and figure things out. And Lord knows it's, it's much harder if that black father is not there. I wonder what kind of relationship she has with her black family. Because if she doesn't know them and doesn't have them for support, she is isolated and alone. Low biracial children are treated horribly when they're in predominantly white communities. They're always made to know that they're an other. There's something else. The only rare exceptions would be for biracial children that are actually so light that they can actually pass for white. And that's a very small percentage. So I wanted to bring this content to you all so that you can see this. And for those of you out here, hey, you make whatever decision you want to make. But I want you to take a good look at this video and listen to this sister's words and understand that your choices today have consequences in the future for the children that you produce with these people. Let that sink in. Like, share, subscribe. Black first. I'll see you all in future content. Celebrate the foundational Black American culture of freedom fighting and resistance with the first annual Arista Sese 5K run. This cultural experience will honor our FBA ancestors and icons while harnessing energy from our past to power our future. There will be security at this event to ensure everyone has a safe and enjoyable experience. Arista Sese run is a cultural event for family and friends. Strollers and wheelchairs are welcome. The in-person event will include a free one-mile fun walk and will be held on December 17th in Tampa, Florida. Unable to make the live event? You can also participate virtually anywhere from December 17th to December 30th. All registered participants will receive the official Arrested Sussé Run finishing medal, t-shirt, and more with the ability to upload their race time to the official site. Live event participants will receive the time race scores, professional finisher photo, video, and your name will be announced as you're welcome across the finish line. Enjoy the post-race after party and review with a traditional FBA breakfast. 
You can also help us settle fun family debates like sugar or salt and grits. Prepare with family workouts and runs and post on social media using the hashtag Run. For register info and sponsorship opportunities, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Click the link in the bio. Hope to see you all there.